All right, we've got The Simpsons Season 1, Episode 2, Bart the Genius. This is an episode that follows Bart uh, going into a school for more intelligent kids for the, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Gifted kids. And we see Bart get there from cheating on a test. He basically switched names between him and the smart kid of their school, Martin. Funny to see Martin as such like a main character so early on, like in a big role in an episode, like before Millhouse gets a big role, before Nelson gets a big role. And once he goes there, you know, he, his parents have such high expectations from him and he grows the stronger bond with his dad than he did before. His dad was normally kind of shit on Bart, kind of like he was always disappointed, always talking about, oh, the boy's doing this, the boy's doing that. But this was kind of like a turning point for them. So there's this big fear of letting out the truth of him not actually being gifted. I haven't watched a lot of Simpsons consistently, but it is one of, this is one of my favorite episodes, and I absolutely enjoy the relationship that uh, Homer and Bart have in this episode. I also think it does a really good job about talking about how w weird school can be, <laughs> you know? Cause like, I know a lot of people that went from regular classes to AP and were like lost. I like how it also, like, in both Bart's school and the school for the gifted, like, it just portrays, like, all these, like, nerdy characters as the bullies. Which, I mean, isn't, like, untrue. You could get bullied by both sides. Like, when we were watching, I like how you put it. The dumbest kid in school and the smartest kid in school will always be bullies. I think it's funny that, um, Bart's, um, paradox actually is, like, a legitimate paradox for this episode. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> like you were saying, the relationship between Homer and Bart. The ending's kind of sad with that in mind, but it's also just so perfect for The Simpsons, especially this early on, because this was the second episode and it was the first normal episode of The Simpsons, with the first one being a Christmas special. It, it kind of feels like almost like a small betrayal to have Homer turn on his son after like showing like how nice their relationship is without any sort of recovery for it at the end. But it's also just so like them because The Simpsons was supposed to be like a new take on the sitcom. So where you have that sentimental moment at the end like Full House or any other sitcom had, it's like they completely take a 180 and make it into like a more miserable ending, um, but a more chaotic and funny one that matches what The Simpsons was going for. So here goes Chris playing devil's advocate again. <laughs> <laughs> I see kind of where he's coming from because his son did technically lie to them about this, right? I'm not saying that Homer's right, but I can kind of see it, you know? Because as a parent, you're supposed to be, you know, the, the person that you can come to about these things. And his anger, at least from, you know, my experience, not as a parent, but as, you know, witnessing other people be parents and parents of myself, I've seen my parents get upset for less. So I kind of feel, or I, I don't feel it, but I see where the episode kind of took that turn, even though you're 100% right <laughs> that it's not, it's, it's meant to be a subversion, but I can also kind of get it. Yeah, I know? mean, I, I, I understand that too. And I think that it's like, you can see the flaws in both Homer and Bart in this episode. Thing is, I think all the sentimental moments in this episode, they still hold. They're still very sincere. I don't think that they're all there just to set up the punchline at the end. Um, but I think it's really in character is the thing. Because I think The Simpsons is supposed to be like a different take on the family where they do care about each other. They do like have really nice moments. I we absolutely need to watch the episode where... Lisa's depressed this season with Bleeding Gums and Murphy and Marge and her have like this really great conversation like the family moments on the show can be really sweet um but it is also just in their nature to be like this Bart's nature to lie and pull off a big scam like this and Homer in Homer's nature to get really angry about it no matter what by the end of it like it's just it's in character even though it's a little sad it's very in character well, also playing devil's advocate again here for Bar for Bart, wow, for Homer, th this is the first time, it's a family first, right? At least that's what he said yeah. in this episode. And so, of course, there's an excitement. D once again, that's not me co-signing Homer's, <laughs> you know, um, behavior, but I, I kind of see it a little bit. I also have to kind of question how everyone just took Bart's word, though. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. Uh, Skinner didn't, but he saw the opportunity to get rid of Bart, so... <laughs> yeah, like, I mean... <laughs> um, also, another thing that's funny is this episode has one of my favorite memes in it, and for how fast that came up, it's hilarious. 
Uh, I also absolutely love the expressions in older Simpsons. I don't know, I just like a lot of older Simpsons stuff. Uh, I haven't seen all the seasons yet, hell, I haven't even watched a lot of Simpsons, but I absolutely enjoy how they work, because they're funny, but also, like, they feel kind of overly exaggerated, but in a realistic type of way, if that's not crazy to say. Um, well, season one is very different from the rest of the show, I would say. Because, like, season one was almost right in them more like they were an actual family. I think from season two, it's still a little bit like that, but it starts to drift a little bit. Homer becomes a bigger moron. Like, he's... Homer's a little dim-witted in season one, but he's not a complete idiot. He's a lot more straightforward than he... Like, I mean, there's episodes where he's embarrassed about Marge's behavior in season one. Um, we also get a different version of Lisa where she's at the opera laughing with Homer and Bart as they're making, like, fart sounds. And yeah, I was, I was gonna talk yeah. about that next. Yeah, go for it. <laughs> uh, I actually really like how even Lisa gets in on it. It's actually kind of funny to look back at this because I was one of those people that wasn't allowed to watch Simpsons, and I do not understand why. I guess maybe because when I was around, because I think this was before me, when I was around, I guess Simpsons had a different reputation, but, like, if my grandmother saw this episode... And uh, assuming that they cherry-picked, like, all the stuff, they probably would have thought Simpsons was a little bit more wholesome just because of those moments with, like, Bart and Homer. Because they, they take up more of the positive moments than the negative in this episode. So you can even be fooled into thinking, like, if you cut that one part, like, if you just watched it and, like, you walked away and didn't see the ending, you would actually believe that Homer was a good father. Yeah, he absolutely would have. And I think he is... That's such a hard, like, that's, again, plain devil's advocate. I think he is a good father. There's just so much stuff on the show that contradicts that, but I think it contradicts it for the sake of comedy. You have to think of in your head, like, what actually is canon and isn't canon? Every single time Homer chokes Bart, if you're trying to imagine him as a good father, you have to kind of ignore that. <laughs> Which I, I know a lot of people aren't going to be able to, but at the same time, you have to kind of understand the reason that Homer does that in the show, and that is to subvert um, old sitcoms. It's like a extreme that speaks out against like the sitcoms that The Simpsons is making fun of. So I'm going to say this straight up, right? Um, Homer choking Bart, I think, is an extreme version of parents spanking their children, uh -huh. right? Like, I know that that's a bold take, but, like, that was acceptable, right, at a time. It, yeah, not only was it acceptable, but it's also, like, yes, I think The Simpsons is an exaggeration. I think not just an exaggeration of, you know, the American family, but just America as a whole. Yeah, because, I mean, Homer, like, chokes Bart for some of the stupidest things, but people got spankings for some of the stupidest things. So, like... Right. It's, it's an exaggeration that's not okay, but, like... It, it's not okay if it happens in real life. If it happens in the cartoon, I'm a little bit... I, I, again, like, what was the point? I think it'd be a lot more weird in a show like BoJack or F is for Family if they treated it like a joke. Because those two shows are a lot more serious, a lot more dramatic. Oh, no, I get it. I'm just saying, like, I feel like to take the stance that it's too crazy is that it's just one step further. And... It's, it's, they're both unacceptable, but, like, one actually happened, the other doesn't. I equate him choking Bart to the equivalent of being spanked, right? Because, I, I get it, it's not that they're good, it's just, you know, that's just how they were. And a lot of people wouldn't say their parents were bad for doing it. You know, some people will. Oh, yeah. Depend a lot of that's, like, generational. Like, oh, yeah, because you know, I was one of those kids that got spankings, and um, I'm not going to demonize my parents for it. Um, it's just um, it's just that's how they grew up, and that's why I don't ever look at Simpsons, which might be problematic on my end, but it's why I don't look at Simpsons and go, ah, ha, ha, yeah, that's him just choking the shit out of Bart. I'm like, no, that's just, that's what Simpsons know. That's what Homer knows. <laughs> <laughs> not that it's correct. I really like this episode. It, it. I don't know, it's just really cool to see, you know, Homer and Bart act as they do. It's really cool to kind of show kind of how, like, the schools were about misbehaving children, because that's something, you know, that they had as well. Because schools back in the day were wild about that, and it's really cool to kind of just see the animation of this episode. I know that that's a completely different thing, but it's something I want to bring up. It's just really cool. Um, There's a lot of fun, like, little animation errors, just because, again, like, the time this came out, you know, you know, like, season two, they perfect, they got the animation done a little bit better. 
but also like this was still like you know being hand drawn this wasn't on a computer or anything yeah. um so there's a lot more room for error in this episode it's mainly just color inconsistencies like characters hair colors shape like getting a little darker or lighter without like the set and change in only other like thing i would want to point out with this one is uh f- first couch gag first uh chalkboard the first chalkboard gag was i will not waste chalk that's that's funny <laughs> they season one they definitely didn't have the simpsons down yet but i th- i think the transition from season one to season two they gained a lot more than what they lost but they did still lose some things like there is charming things about the simpsons in the first season that are like that just flat out do not return to the show uh we were talking about it before like hope bart had like a little group of friends in season one and like millhouse is the only one who survived <laughs> after season one i love how millhouse was represented by the way because <laughs> i don't i don't know Such if Mil- yeah i don't know if millhouse would have stepped up like that today <laughs> yeah so. no, M- millhouse is uh millhouse was a dick in this episode yeah <laughs> anyways i think i'm good with this one anything else you want to say Mm-mm, i'm good